Hey developers, today we're gonna look at five fun APIs you guys can use in your apps. So I think as a developer, we're always kind of looking at fun things we can do, fun APIs we can kind of bring into our own personal projects or portfolio projects. And I kind of looked through and I found these five. I think I really like them. So I think you guys should check them out. Let's begin. Before we begin, actually, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. Developers, today's video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is an in-person coding and design bootcamp that offers housing for full-time students at no extra cost. They have programs that are between six and 16 weeks long, including web dev, iOS, software QA, and UX design. Dev Mountain loves hearing from program with Eric subscribers. So make sure you click on that link in the description if you or someone you know is ready to dive into coding. So once again, make sure you click on that link in the description and you can learn more about Dev Mountain. Thanks. Okay, let's take a look at these five APIs and see what they're all about. And if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. So this channel is all about web development, programming, JavaScript, especially Vue.js, React, Angular. If you guys like that, make sure you smash that like button. Let's go ahead and begin. All right, so brewery DB. So uh, if you're a fan like me and you like beers or breweries, this is a cool API. It has a sandbox so you can, you have to kind of sign up for this one. Some of these you have to sign up for, some are just free, you don't even need to sign up. But you can have up to 10,000 requests a day for free on their sandbox. They do have paid plans available. So if you're creating like a commercial product, you could use it. So basically it lists beers and breweries and tons of information on them. So it's kind of a neat, easy to use API that you can just kind of jump in and start using. Also, I love to hear from you guys. Leave a comment below with what APIs you guys have used for fun projects or things that you use in your day job. That'd be very interesting to me. So NASA APIs, NASA APIs. I actually did a video on this where I used the NASA API to grab some uh, photographs and get some rover images. So it requires an API key that used to be open. I swear I used it one time and it was open, but right now you have to use an API key. So it has like astronomy pictures of the day, event trackers for natural events. It has like a Mars weather service, which is really neat, and rover images. So if you wanna know what the weather's like in Mars, no, use this API. The third one, I've used this a bunch of times in a bunch of videos, is the Reddit API. So what's cool about this, so if you're familiar, if you're not familiar with Reddit, it's like this big, huge website. I think it's like one of the top 20 most visited website on in the world. And it has just article after article, it has these things called subreddits. Anybody can post, they put topics. It's like a big discussion forum. So anyways, if you really want to, and they have like picture forums and things like that, if you can go to any forum, you can put .json and you can just look at the JSON output. So you can go through and go to your favorite subreddits, add .json, use that in the API, do call, do get calls to that, grab the JSON, parse it out, do whatever you want with it. It's just really big, it's really beginner friendly. You don't need any authentication keys. You don't need any special tokens or send over. Just a really easy to use API to get started. And I've used this uh, several times in several projects. And you can even just do it to uh, grab some, like if you wanted to just grab the headlines of each one of those, your favorite subreddits, you could do that. One thing to keep in mind, I do know that they do rate limit after a certain period of time. So if you're doing thousands of calls to the Reddit API, then you're gonna have problems. Now this is just adding the JSON is just one part of it, oops. There is other parts of it where you can do a lot more complicated queries, but for beginners, I would just go to reddit.com add the .json and start playing around with it. So I think most people eventually, uh, when they start learning a program, or even if you're a, a dedicated hardcore developer, eventually you're gonna create an app with a weather, with getting weather API information. So getting your local weather or, or searching through a zip code or a state and trying to find, and city and trying to find the weather in that city. And one thing I think is funny is every time I look, it seems like these weather APIs either go down or they end up charging too much or something changes. So people end up using different weather APIs. And then sometimes people just try to find a website and find an API that's not really open, but they can use it anyways. That's a whole different discussion. If you spend enough time, you can find all sorts of information online that you can just scrape for free. And until they block you, you're pretty good. But this one actually does have an API. And this is one that I've seen consistently, at least here in 2020, people are always saying this is a great API to use if you're just doing weather data. If you disagree, let me know what weather data API you guys use. But open weather map seems pretty good. You can get up to 60 calls per minute with our free plan. 
and then it has five day or three day forecasts. I believe you do need an authentication token to do it. So it makes a, and a one, one or two more extra steps, but if you're doing a fun little weather API project, this is something you probably wanna look at. And if you're doing it for commercial, you can buy the commercial plan as well. YouTube API, so that YouTube has their own API. It, of course, this is, you need to be authenticated to be able to use it. And it's a little more complicated, but you can grab all sorts of crazy information. Once you're logged in, authenticated, you can start doing searches for channels. You can grab channels by their ID, you can grab playlists. You can grab comments, you can figure out which videos have the most views, which have the least views. You can grab like what the most popular comments are. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with the YouTube API. I don't know why I don't see more people like doing videos on this. I know Traversy Media has done a few on the YouTube API and a few other YouTubers have, but it's quite popular and it's quite powerful. So I think this is a really fun API to play around with and, and to test. All right, I thought I'd go ahead and jump into an example of here how to use one of the APIs I just mentioned. So one of the big ones out there is the NASA one. I think this is a really easy one to use. You can actually register on the NASA website. So if you look at the NASA API, there is this NASA open API and you kind of have to generate a key to use it and you have authentication and rate limits and all this usage, which is fine. But if you kind of want to just play around with the API, this is one thing I did. If you look at the NASA image search image API they actually have this image and video library which has this images.nasa.gov which has a, a search for images so we kind of want to take what they're doing here and create our own image search so this one doesn't require a key or anything obviously don't go overboard here I'm sure that they'll block you if you do millions of requests a minute or something like that but just kind of playing around with it it's probably not a problem so I implemented my own NASA search here. So this is a view app. So I'll show you the code in a second, but I could just type in something, I don't know, like Venus. And I get a, a nice little dialogue here of, of Windows. So, so I have a title here. I'm grabbing the image from the image results and then the description of what it's all about. Like this is figure shows the volcanic peak, I done mons, Aphrodite, Aphrodite Terror transit event and obviously this is really simple this is a, a real simple box here and just some text and obviously I can make this look a little nicer probably need a little bit more margins at the top and bottom but you know just for a simple test of an API I, th I think that's kind of neat and it kind of gets you an idea of what you can do and you can pop this into any app that you're working on and just kind of play around with it so uh, let's see how we did this and by the way I limited it to 30 it actually returns back a hundred images I thought that was a lot. Uh, here's, uh, we can do like Rover. So here's the Rover team uh, over the Rover. So it's kind of cool, you can get all these images and I can make this mo much bigger if I wanted to. And it probably would be neat if I click on this and I'll bring the full size image up. That's another like little enhancement that I could add in here. Let's see how I did it. So here's the view app. It's pretty simple, I'm using Tailwind CSS. That's what, you could see all these utility classes, that's what they all are just because I wanted to get up and running quickly. And then I just, this is the default home. I don't really have anything in here right now. If you look in the app view, it just had, it loads the router view. I have just have one route for the home route. I deleted everything else. So if I want to get started, uh, first thing I would do is add a V model search. I'm going to go ahead and hide the sidebar. So V model search, I'm going to have a search that uh, has two way data binding between the app and, he, and well, it's basically two-way data binding between this input and inside our reactivity system inside view. And then I want to do a V4. So um, I'm going to add a result. I'm going to get back a result. I'm going to grab back an index. Make sure I have my key inside here. And I'm going to basically iterate over an array of results. And then when I get those results, I'm going to look at the data and I'm gonna grab the first one in description. Now, you're probably thinking, well, how do you know about this? If you look at the images API, so I think uh, if I go to inspect here, let's take a look in the console. I have this array, it's probably hard to see, but inside this array, I went ahead and printed it out from this example here. I have a data, and then I have an array of data, and each, the, the first item of the data is what I wanna get, and that's where I can get the keywords, I can get the title, 
Um, I can also get the description and center. So that's where I'm grabbing. So I'm just grabbing the description and the title. So here's the description. And then I can grab the actual linked. This is the result links zero href is the image. And then I'm going to add the title to the top. And I'm just using these utility classes. I'm using flex. I'm using the flex direction column. And it's the item center, which is nice to just easily do that. So let me add the default for this default object here. So I want the data object. I'm going to use Axios. I actually already installed Axios into this view project. And I want to have the results as one of my data properties and search. So we know that search is bound to the two-way data bound on the input. And then we're going to have our methods. So we want a click. So we want this button here, which is, oh, excuse me, this form. I didn't add a, actually a button. So what I'm doing here, this is the same as a V on. So I'm saying on the submit, so when we hit enter basically on the search, it's going to prevent the default and then run the click method and pass in search to it. And search, I'm calling query here. I could also just get it from this.search if I wanted to, but this is easier. And then I'm doing Axios call. I'm going to do a git. And I could have done this with fetch too, but I thought this was just a little easier. And here's the URL I'm using images-api.nasa.gov slash search and then Q for a query. I pass in the query that's right here and then media type equals image. And then um, this is a promise. Of course, Axios returns promise. And when I get the response back, I'm taking, it's pretty big. I probably would, if you did this in the real world, you probably want to double check to make sure that the data is there and the collection is there and the item before I do any slices. Otherwise, I get it maybe an error. And also, I'd want to catch any errors. But for this simple example, I didn't. And OK, cool. So that's it. So uh, that that's pretty much it. All I'm doing is this one click method and then saving it. So let's see here. Save it. And I'll put in Earth. Cool. So yeah, uh, it's still working as I expected. Everything looks good. Now, I, I definitely could see grabbing some more information from here, maybe even refactoring this into its own component at some time, and just be able to plop this search window in anywhere, maybe pass in the like search values as a prop in here. I mean, I could definitely see this being refactored and, and being nice and used to, nice and easy to use. One other thing I wanted to show you guys is I did mention Reddit. So if you go to any Reddit, Reddit subreddit, so like if I go to picks.reddit.com, this should bring, yep, so this brings the Reddit picks. But if I do picks.reddit.com and I put picks.json at the end, now I have this big JSON blob right here. And so you could cer certainly go through data, then go through the children, and then get the data from the kind. It looks like uh, there's an object. Children is an array of objects. And then get the first object and get the data out of there. And then you can get all sorts of things from it. It has tons of information from, like, are, is this quarantined? Is it hidden? The mod reason title, the gilded, the author's name. You can grab some links. It has the thumbnail in there. And I believe, yeah, you can pull out the links from it. Here's the URL, the permalink. The URL, I know the picture is in here too. You just have to find, yeah, here's like the thumbnail for this one. All right, so you can certainly just use this API. And here's some images. Like if I click on one of these images, I guess it won't let me pull it from there. But you can pull the images and then use that in your own app, which makes it really nice. It's a cool little quick API. So if you wanted to test out a HTTP library, test out kind of going through a complex data set and pulling things out of it, this would be also really uh, nice to do. Just like with the NASA API, it's pretty large. There's lots of information that comes out of it. All right, so that, those are two different APIs. I'm not going to get into the brewery one or the other ones, but I just wanted to kind of have a quick demo of how you would do this in real life. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave it below and make sure you click that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks.